Hi, we're the Snowball Kickers, and over the last few years, we've been making a series of films that challenged ourselves and the audiences watching them. We thought we'd revisit them by getting back some of the actors and creatives involved for a chat. Keep watching after the film for this fun and fascinating discussion. Tom, Tom, I want you to listen to me. Really listen to me and don't interrupt me. Don't talk over me because every time I try and say something, try and tell you something, you start talking over me or you argue with the first thing that I have to say and so I don't even get a chance to say the second. I guess it's like if you didn't hear me say it, then I haven't said it. But if you say just one word, anything, I'm out of here. Out of your life forever. I know you'll miss me. I've got enough pride left in me to know that. But you have done your very best to destroy me. And you criticize every single aspect of me and <laughs> from my hair, clothes, hobbies, job, even my degree. You do it in front of your friends, in front of my friends, and every time I get upset, you just say, oh, for God's sake, Rebecca, can't even take a joke. And then you make comments about how oversensitive I am and, and that I'm no fun. Well, of course I'm no bloody fun, you... <laughs> Bastard, and you have wrung every single drop of fun out of me, and you have trampled over my heart time and time again, and <sighs> look at me here without a tissue. <laughs> Two years of being called Snot Rag Girl did that for me and... I used to always carry tissues with me, but then when you start going on about it... You're probably thinking, like, what's she going on about? Why is she talking like this? And I'll tell you why. I've seen through you. I've seen through your tough guy act. Underneath, you were just this weak, scared, pathetic little boy. You know, when I said that, I'll leave you, even if you just said one word. Well, I'm leaving you anyway. And you'll never even get to say your bit. How does it feel to lose your voice? Does it scare you? I hope so.
So you've just watched Out of Here. I'm going to pass over to Jeff, who wrote it. Well, again, it was another, um, another film that started off as a showreel piece. Um, I wanted to write a piece that would give an actress a range of emotions in about five minutes so that they could really sort of show their acting chops uh, with a modern piece that people hadn't seen. You know, a lot of showreels have pieces and films that people have seen before. I came up with the storyline and a situation um, where someone's talking to someone who's not speaking back. Uh, and rather than that just be a kind of slightly false thing, um, that's why I came up with the idea that she says, if you speak, I'm out of here. Darren and Imogen and Matt then worked on a way of making that silence from the other person a really important part of the film. I wasn't involved in the filming of it, and I gather it all happened on New, not New Year's Eve, Christmas Eve, mm -hmm. and, well, as, as is obvious, in one take. Was that a deliberate decision to do just one take? No. <laughs> I, it was one of those, let's rehearse it, but we'll just film it just to see what it's like and all this. And we just got it. They were happy. I was happy. So why not go with it? It was the only time we've never gone one for luck and, and taken a second take. Mm -hmm. I just felt that it had gone through the whole range of emotions and uh, an image had got herself to that point of breaking. Uh, and then the, the moment of realisation so perfectly pitched i thought well we could probably do it again and again and again but you'd gain some and you'd lose some whereas this one was just one of those unconscious journeys that she took the character on and obviously with the simplicity of the filming it just allowed it to happen mm -hmm. i i just thought that we wouldn't gain much by doing it again so it very very slowly goes um there's a posh film word for it um it can burn. Pardon? <laughs> it is a camp. Zooms in. It burns. Zooms okay. in. It very slowly zooms in. Was that in the camera or did you edit that zoom? No, because well, originally we, we, we had a vision that we were going to put the camera on a, on a dolly and actually manually move the camera. Um, but we made, we made the decision that we were just going to sit the camera s steady on, a, on sticks on a tripod and then potentially do the digital push or pull. Um, in post, in edit, and um, we had the 4K footage, so we had that option to do it. And the, the, that take just went so well; it was just a no-brainer. It was like, let's not overcomplicate it. Let's go with what we've got. So do you do that? That zoom is that the speed of it? Is that controlled manually, or do you put a, a computer program to move it at a certain rate, or how does it, that happen? Yeah, uh, no, it's just literally at the beginning of the edit, you give it a keyframe. And then at the end of it, you give it another keyframe and you say you want to go from here to there or there to there. And it, and it kind of does it all for you, really. It's, it's magical, magical. What were you actually looking at? What was your eyeline focus? Because it's very, very strong all the way through. Um, it was just where the camera was. It was just an off centre of it. So you sort of have the intense gaze towards camera, like you are looking at someone. So I think where the camera was, is probably the kettle on the, right. <laughs> on the kitchen countertop, I think it was. it was. I was talking to a kettle. But did you, obviously, um, for the actress, because you, it's only one shot, it's five minutes long. Mm -hmm. How did you keep the kind of intensity? I mean, obviously you had a focus of, a focus of your gaze, which kept it intense but keeping the intensity and the feelings when you've got two other people and a camera and... Actually, you know what? Um, I didn't even register Darren or Matt. They weren't there. I, it was just me. And I, was, and I was focusing. It was like rehearsal of the speech. It was literally in character. I was talking to someone in my head. And I think we've all, all had that moment where we, we need to say something to someone and you don't know how to say it. So you keep rehearsing. Like, oh, I'm going to say this. I have to say that. And it was just literally that going through my head but there was no one else in that room i i ignored both of them and when they said cut um i think it was matt i think you even said you're like oh my god i think i'm welling up here yes. <laughs> a bit emotional right now and i was like oh yeah, yeah. you're here aren't you hello <laughs> yeah oh yeah you wuss <laughs> but, yeah. 
No, I, I, I felt very much in character. I didn't feel like Imogen saying lines. But when I'm rehearsing, say, a monologue, I love doing monologues because you do go through an entire story and you have all these ups and downs and emotions and everything. And I think um, I take it from, I remember uh, this guy, he, 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 he's this great memory guy and he, he does a story with everything he does and says and what he sees and what he has to remember. And so when I'm doing a monologue, I break it down like it is a story like that. And I'll just remember, remember and remember like that. But then it just comes so naturally, it just because it flowed so well, the dialogue flowed so well. So I have, you know, credit, credit, credit to you, Jeff, for that. Give me that, absolutely. And it, I, and when when you say in the word so naturally, when you're in character, the emotion just comes naturally. So I think that's a good thing doing one take. It did feel real, and I think yeah. that helps the story. That's why I didn't do a second one. I just thought that. The next take, you, it would be too thought through. Yeah, you know, mm. just. I mean, yeah. I, I know you were capable of doing something. I think there would have been some higher, higher moments and some lower, lower moments. But the, when you average these things out, I just thought this felt so raw and so immediate. It's like you were only going to say these words once, so we just filmed it once. Mm. And I think if if you had ended up going with a second take, it would have ended up being take three, take four, yes. take five. Exactly. Exactly. Could have been. I have to apologise, actually, thinking about it, in that I gave, I gave you the line that you don't, you don't carry a handkerchief because of his abusive behaviour, and then I make you cry or, you know, in the text. So you, you can't wipe it, so you're kind, of, you're kind of doing a Juliet Stevenson with all this... I thought, that was so mean. I should have said, oh, I'm going to get my hanky out now. I can clean my face up. It's, it's very ladylike as well. It's not like... <laughs> But you are actually you are actually wet. That's the thing. I just think you know, um, you know, anyone who with a hanky would have just done it. But you 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 actually have to. It has to be real. That's the thing that you have to yeah. have the water on your face and and be wiping yeah. it off. They are real tears. There's no onions or tweezers involved or plucking of skin. The, the writing itself, again, I think, was 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 so economically written. Mm. Um, you know, it, it, it had that yeah. huge backstory. It had the, the moment, you know, the current story, I call it. And, and then again, it had, like all the other films, it had the twist. It's what's going to happen next. Um, That's what I was, liked about this, because when you watch it, you don't know, obviously, until the end that he's not there. You kind of think he is there, but then he's not. And then you hear something. And it's like, is that the door? Is that something else? Has she got him tied up about to kill him? Well, this is the thing is that I played it to a friend and um, and he went, oh, this is brilliant. It was really, really dark. And I'm going, what are you on about? And he goes, well, she's got him tied up in another room. And I went, what? And he goes, well, that noise at the end, isn't that him falling off the chair? Because he's tied up and she's going to kill him. And I'm going, okay. Uh, in your world, obviously, that's the story. And it was amazing how... Um, you can take some text, we can film it with one intent, it can be acted with a certain intent, and then someone can interpret it completely differently. Yeah. And for him, it was the sound effect of the door opening, because we actually opened our door and closed it. But to him, yeah. it sounded like someone falling over. And um, he's a sound well, designer. never ever thought of that. Yeah. We never no. thought of it. And now I can only think of that. So uh, thank you to Imogen. Um, it was lovely discussing Out of Here, um, yeah. a terrific little short film that's doing really, really well on YouTube. And, um, mm. and when it's played at festivals, there wasn't a single sound to be heard for five minutes. It was that intense and um, it's been a joy when we've actually played this to people. Yes, thank you for watching it and I hope you enjoyed it. Comment below. Yes. Okay, Give it. Thanks, everyone. And like, like, it. like it. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> like it. <laughs>